Hello, my fellow Hydro homies. Welcome on back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I have to, hold on, let me, me open my windows. Let me open my blinds a little bit so I can see you. How you doing, guys? <laughs> Welcome on back. Hope you're having a lovely day out there. How are you doing today? You doing all right? Feeling good? Like, I wish I could talk to you guys like live, you know, sometimes, but I can't. I'm here recording. You guys are there wherever you are. Anyways, all of that aside, let us begin our full album listen, everyone, of The Water Boys. This is the sea. This is their third studio album, released 1985, uh, and has been suggested to me and recommended to me by quite a few of you. We've already listened to The Whole of the Moon quite some time ago, and a lot of you had impeded and implored that I listen to some more. So let's just dive into the whole thing. Why not take a, take a bite? Out of that cheesy moon. Some of you that had suggested this particular album, Richard Haig, Rick B, Gaia Eternal, Kevin M, Azabax, Kevin, or I'm sorry, Kenneth McRae, Hilocus, Carter Link, Kyle Woolsley, and Rian Van Dijk, and Jals, Jans Lohand. Sorry if I mispronounced anything, and I know I did, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited to listen to some more from the band, uh, especially at your request. And I hope that you guys enjoy spending the time with me. I'm I'm sure that we'll be here at least an hour or so. So as always, grab a drink, grab a glass, grab whatever you're chewing on, grab whatever you're munching on, whatever you're doing. However you're going to enjoy this next this next span of time, I enjoy now and start it up. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. That's the intro. <laughs> I have nothing else. Um, of course, as always, get it out the way. Press the like button, subscribe, all of that stuff if you want. It helps a lot if you support me over on Patreon. as little as $2 a month. Helps me do full album listens and more and more and more. So you can do that. Um, but otherwise, let's go ahead and just jump into it, shall we? Let's jump to the first track, which is going to be Don't Bang the Drum. Why not? Drums are, I would, I would say, meant to be banged. So let's go ahead and... <laughs> Let's go ahead and listen to it here. Wait, no, no, no. Take your sip. Take your sip. I almost forgot. Celebratory sip. Here's to you. A little coffee for me. Mm -hmm. mm. Black with just a little bit of sugar. Uh, let's go. Don't bang the drum. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I know we've only listened to one song from the Water Boys at this particular point, but man, do they know how to make an entrance. <laughs> they know how to make an entrance and an impression. Uh, love the startup with the scenery with this dust bowl being whipped up in some desert over in the west somewhere. You can see the dust rising. You see some lone rider, or some would say a lone ranger, riding from the horizon, the sun-soaked land. There, there are the heat waves bouncing off this figure as it slowly becomes more and more precise, more and more coherent. The way that they set up that, in, that intro, fantastic. Of course, especially with that trumpet, that, that lone wailing sound in the desolate desert. That's at least what I see and what I hear. Just a really wonderful buildup and the the slight waves up and down of music during that intro. Just really brilliant. And then before you know it, it takes a sharp rise and then just comes in hard. I told you during that intro, I said, it's gonna come in heavy. It's gonna come in hard. I know it, I feel it. And it did not disappoint in that in any sort of way. What I really thought was cool was how the, the trumpet kind of was wailing in that landscape in the beginning and how at least in the beginning of the song when it first when it got into it the guitar kind of took over that duty so i liked how it kept the same melodic feel but changed the instrument so you get a different tone out of it i thought that was really nice um the horns i have to say it kind of make this track though like obviously from the beginning but moving into the saxophone even in those one note wails those one note screams that would happen just just it adds this power i mean like uh, an overwhelming 
amount of power and force, along with obviously the rest of the instrumentation. The singing was really nice. That's going to be Mike Scott uh, singing here. I love his, <laughs> like the way that you throw those out there. The whole track had this very dense sound. Like there's a lot going on. It's a dense sound, but it had this party anthemic kind of feel. It, it sounded like a jungle to me. That's the best way I can describe it. It sounded like a musical jungle uh, listening to this with, with everything going on, the hooping, the hollering, the bass, the, the horns especially, the guitar leads that would come in. Really, really nice. There's a lot of members playing on this, <laughs> this album here. Uh, so you have the Waterboys, which are Mike Scott, Anthony Thistlewaite, and Carl Wallinger, or Wallinger. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mispronouncing something. I know, and I'm sorry. Who are handling, like, a lot in here. Like, for example, Mike Scott, vocals, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, piano, percussion, synth, drum machine programming, bells and effects. Anthony, saxophone, double bass, bass guitar, mandolin. Carl, bass synth, piano, organ, keyboard, synthesizer, percussion. Like, already just within the wall, um, the wallflowers, the water boys themselves, they're handling a lot. But then you have a ton of other people, uh, violin, trumpet, French horn, more bass guitar, more drums, cymbals, snare drum, percussion, bass, bass. Matthew Seligman is on here at some point, apparently. So that's kind of cool. So there's like a lot of other people featuring in here, which obviously would uh, help them to have that bigger sound than perhaps if they were to just be themselves even though this is a studio recording, so they could just overdub, but they were, they were probably going for a certain feel, maybe a certain camaraderie between all the, the musicians involved. Who knows? But regardless, it's a great sound that they have going here. Well, here we are in a special place. What are you going to do here? Now we span in a special place. What will you do here? What show of soul are we going to get from you? It could be deliverance or history. Under these skies so blue. Could be something true. But if I know you... You'll bang the drum like monkeys do. Like you have this gift and, and he's saying like, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with perhaps this life? And then he says, well, if I know you, you're going to act like monkeys do and you're just going to bang the drum. Here we are in a fabulous place. What are you going to dream here? So like this place is a beautiful place, but you're going to ruin it. <laughs> Basically, I know you love the high life. You love to leap around. You love to beat your chest and make your sounds, but not here, man. This is sacred ground with a power flowing through. If I, and if, I, and if no you, you'll bang the drum like monkeys do. Well, that's why I kind of see it as, as you know, you've been given this special gift, special opportunity, a special place, but at the end of the day, you're going to do what monkeys do and bang the drum. You're just going to, you're going to ruin it. You're going to, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> Here we stand on a rocky shore. Your father stood here before you. I can see his ghost explore you. I can feel the sea implore you. Not to pass on by. Not to walk on by. Not to try. Just let it come. Don't bang the drum. And then that is the warning that is to be heeded uh, going on. So uh, an effort to be made to resist those, those instincts that you may already have. Those, those For whatever it may be. Like I said, I, I don't know exactly what it's referring to. But regardless, it's, it's you're being given something special, like this is yours, please take care of it. Try to resist your instincts to destroy it, um, whatever it may be. And then I like the, the ending lines here with, you know, your father stood here before you. I can see his ghost explore you, the sea imploring you, don't pass on by, don't bang the drum. Like, hey, hey you know, your father or your forefathers and those who came before you messed this up. But this is your chance to do right and to fix whatever it is, and not to bang the drum. Oh, there's a Wikipedia article for it. I could just click on that. Um, it says it was released as a single in Germany. It says, uh, t -t 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 Don't Bang the Drum originated as a set of lyrics Scott had written. Although he usually did this songwriting alone, he decided to hand over some lyrics to Anthony and Carl as an experiment. Uh, Wallinger was giving the lyrics for Don't Bang the Drum and came up with the music for it. Scott says he did a sassy 60s-ish Detroit rhythm with great melodies and good chords. I really liked it, but I didn't like the groove. So I reconfigured it first as a slow ballad and then later as a full tilt rocker. And I guess obviously from not the horse's mouth, but the artist's mouth. Yes, a full tilt rocker is probably the best way to describe just how this is and how it comes in and just annihilates. Anyways, let's move on into the next track here. Uh, which is the one that we've already heard. That is going to be The Hole of the Moon. Um, 
probably going to let that one lead into Spirit, which is only a minute 50 seconds right after. And we've already heard the Hole in the Moon, so we'll talk lightly over it. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. The Hole of the Moon, obviously, like you guys had said and I see here, was their big single from the band. And, I mean, it's catchy as anything else. It's on the Hole of the Moon. Okay, ignore my singing. But, you like, it's very catchy. And it has this very mel melancholic blue feel to it. But it's also very beautiful in, in the way that it's layered in the lyrics and, and what I think they're kind of hinting at and talking about. Like, everything comes together in this very beautiful way. I like how on this track, it's a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit of a an exhale to the opening track's inhale. Instead of taking in the energy, this one's expending it, and there is a little bit of, like, grace and rest here. So to me, the keyboards, the sound and the melodies that are springing from those keyboards are what stands out here, and what really gives it that kind of glossy blue texture that I'm hearing from it. And if I can just, if I can just say... Not the very ending, but the 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 let's just say false ending when um, when this the singer the lead singer is singing his lines and then the rest of the band are doing their harmonies. Eventually, the horns come in and it's kind of this little climax there in the music. It reminded me in some ways of how with oh my god not Tinder sticks um, uh, downtown lights hats uh, Blue Nile. It reminds me of that song and the ending there where. He kind of goes off into what I would say is like a little bit of a ramble, a little bit of a rant. But this here with Hole of the Moon, it's accompanied by friends. It's accompanied by horns. It's accompanied by this different kind of blue texture. But I get the same feeling and emotional connection, I would say, with this song that I do with Downtown Lights. But that's a little bit more on the downpour. This one's, I would say... Uh, a little bit more happily overcast. Like this is a day in that you're stuck in while it's raining, but like you get cozy. Downtown lights, it's more of like trudging through the rain uh, in the city. Anyways, uh, but, <laughs> but I do like the track here. Uh, I pictured a rainbow, you held it in your hands. I had flashes, but you saw the plan. I wandered out in the world for years while you just stayed in your room. I saw the crescent, but you saw the whole of the moon. You were there in the turnstiles with the wind at your heels. You stretched for the stars and you don't know how it feels. To reach too high, too far, too soon, you saw the whole of the moon. So what I think this is about is admiring someone for following their dreams, admiring someone for keeping an open mind, being adventurous, and just being a dreamer. You know, when he says, I saw the crescent, but you saw the whole of the moon, he only saw a part of the, the plan or the, the whatever it is, the dream, but this other person saw the whole thing. And that's what he even says like in the beginning, you know, I had flashes, but you saw the plan. You saw everything. You had that insight and experience. I was grounded while you filled the skies. I was dumbfounded by truth. You cut through lies. I saw the rain dirty valley. You saw Brigadoon. I saw the crescent. You saw the whole of the moon. This could also, I don't know, like, you know, little bleeds or anything like that. But this could also be him maybe uh, paying respect to a god or a divinity. Like maybe he doesn't understand everything, like being man, but this, this god, this divine, he's saying you understand everything much more than me, and I'm kind of humbled by it. I spoke about wings. You just flew. <laughs> I wondered, I guessed, I tried, but you just knew. I sighed, but you swooned. I saw the crescent, you saw the whole moon. I, I really like that, that kind of rapid fire rhyme in there. I spoke about wings, like I spoke about flying. You just did it. You just did it. I wondered, I guessed, I tried. But you, you just knew. You sighed, you knew your purpose. You you ever look at someone or see people that they, they know what their purpose is in life and they just do it. They just fulfill it. And maybe sometimes that makes you feel like, man, I don't even know my purpose in life. Or maybe you do, but something's holding you back. And I think that this is that admiration towards that person or those kind of people that are able to, in a sense, see the whole of the moon.
like I said, this uh, was released as a single as well from the album. Uh, let's see, it's charting. Let's see. It was not a big success when initially released, only making the lower ends of the chart. Although it did reach number 12 on the Australian chart. Uh, upon its re-release in 1991, it did reach number three in the United Kingdom. So uh, let's go ahead and move on into the next track here. I said I was going to let the next track play, and I didn't. So in that case, let's let the next two tracks play. We'll listen to Spirit and then the Pan Within. Like, like a cast iron pan or like pan like the... Pan wasn't a god. Pan was just like a demigod, maybe? Mythical creature. The pan within. Stuck in a labyrinth. Anyways, let's go. Let's go. I like the spirit is man. encouragement and inspiration in this track. This little breakdown expansion and back into the rhythm. Best song on the album. So far, best song on the album. Favorite, banger, yeah. Save it, star it, whatever you want to do. That is so, mmm, mmm, that has everything that I want. <laughs> hmm, at a certain point, I, I say it occasionally, but at a certain point during this track, I would probably say about halfway through, I kind of stopped reacting to it. <laughs> I just, I stopped reacting to it and I was just in my own space. You know when you're enjoying something like, it's different, right? Me being here in front of the camera, reacting and listening to stuff like, you know, it's a different kind of experience than just sitting back and listening to an album. However, about three minutes in, I just kind of sat back. I actually kind of turned my brain off, to be honest, and I just listened. I was enjoying this one. Um, the strings, I have to mention it, I have to talk about it, I have to speak of it. The strings make this track so delightful to listen to because I think the atmosphere here, where I said Hole of the Moon has this kind of sleek, melancholic kind of feel, this one has a, a tense ex excitement. This one has an anticipation to it. This, was, this one has a standing at the precipice of pleasure and about to topple over. There's something about it. And obviously the way that the strings, you know, when they come out very glamorous and very big, it, it sounds great, especially within the storm of the music. But I actually found the strings most interesting at those kind of quieter moments. During the, the verse, for example, there are moments where the strings would, I would say, sing from the shadows, kind of like in, in a dark wood. And, you know, you, you don't know if there's something lurking behind the trees because everything's kind of dark and shadowy under the moonlight, under the whole of the moonlight. And, and like you feel like you're being watched. There's this kind of excitement from the adrenaline, but there's also this tension. There's also thing, this anxiety. And I think this, the strings did a great job of kind of, at least for me, grabbing that feeling, but still maintaining this really, really great beauty and elegance uh, within it. Um, the music as a whole was great. Something I'm kind of finding with this album so far is... Picking out the instruments like I usually do when I may mention like the bass line, the guitar, whatever it may be, I'm actually finding that not really a great way of coming into this album because everything comes together in, in this big sound that is just kind of this big back cancel in the greatest way possible. It's just this, this brunt and blunt force that just collides with you. But it's a beautiful kind of collision. It's the greatest kind of collision. And so I'm finding it kind of hard in a way to pick out the individual instruments, whereas I'm just more interested in the whole sound and how it all comes together uh, with this album. And so far, maybe there's other stuff that we'll dive into a little bit more. But what I did, what I did really like is how in the first verse you had the violins present, and then in the second verse they weren't present, but instead you had the guitar kind of becoming that main melodic lead, which I thought was kind of cool. Anyways, Pan Within, can't do without. Uh, let's talk about it. So, like I said, I'll look it up really quick, but Pan, isn't that, isn't Pan like the, the fawn, the goat man, right? I think, and that kind of um, is representative of like your desires, your indulgences, which she's kind of talking about in this song. Come with me on a journey beneath the skin. Come with me on a journey under the skin. We will look together for the Pan Within. 
Close your eyes, breathe slow, we'll begin. Close your eyes, breathe slow, we'll begin to look together for the pan within. And then at those moments when he says like, okay, we're gonna look within, uh, singing goes away. And we get into that, that inward look. And the music doesn't change to totally, but it does give a little bit more of an expansion to, in a sense, allow for that inward meditation. Swing your hips, loose your head and let it spin. Swing your hips, loose your head, let it spin. And we will work together or look together for the pan within. Then he repeats, repeats the close your eyes, breathe slow, and we'll begin. Put your face in my window. Breathe a night full of treasures. The wind is delicious, sweet and wild with a promise of pleasure. The stars are alive and nights like these were born to be sanctified by you and me. I like that. That that poetic spin on romance and this rendezvous. The stars are alive and nights like these were born to be sanctified by you and me. All we got to do is surrender. Give in. Looking to the pan within. Let's really quickly pan. Let's look that up. Mythology. Just so I'm, I can make sure that I'm correct in what I'm speaking of. Um, in ancient Greek religion and mythology, pan is the god of the wild. Shepherds and flocks, rustic music, and impromptus. Impromptus and companion of the nymphs. The nymphs. Okay, so I guess he is a god. I didn't know that Pan was technically a god. I thought it was like whatever's just beneath that. Uh, he has horns, legs. You guys know what he looks like. Uh, <laughs> um, in Roman religion and myth, Pan's counterpart was Faunus, the nature god who was the father of blah, 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 blah. Um, he is often affiliated with sex. That's what I was looking for. He is also connected to fertility and the season of spring which you can obviously get that with that, uh, with the lyrics there and what they're describing. Beautiful, great track, best track on the album so far. But let's not stop there, let's continue moving on into the next track, which is gonna be, hold on, before I move into the next track, really quickly, I'm actually surprised because it's a little chilly outside, so I didn't have the, like, the fan on or anything, but um, that's the light. I'm, uh, I'm actually gonna need the fan. Do you guys ever do that thing where like, you have the two switches, one's light, one's the fan, and then you, like, you may have lived in the house. Oh, the fan is way too high. You may have lived in the house for, like, you know, 10 years or whatever. Like, you should know by now which, uh, which switch is the light and which switch is the fan. But no matter what, you always hit the wrong one. Anyways, let me just make sure that's right. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to the next track. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and do it with Medicine Bow. Here we go. Said this so aggressively. <laughs> I've never heard anyone describe getting dressed so aggressively. <laughs> Listen, you know, I'm gonna take my books, I'm gonna wear my coat, gonna find my scarf and wrap it around my throat. The way he says it just this is this is probably, and me being unfamiliar with, you know, the Water Boys, this is like the closest to like, not punk, but you know, having that kind of spirit, at least in essence, in some part, into the music, obviously the faster drum pace, the faster tempo, the aggression that we're hearing here, uh, which I also think is a testament to the band's sound. It doesn't sound completely different from what they've been doing before, but there is a little bit more of that brashness interjection. It's like a quick shot uh, of some sort of ad uh, adrenaline. I almost said horse tranquilizer, but that would be the opposite of what I'm trying to say. And horses don't really need any adrenaline. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? There's something about the, the guitar I was going to say, but I don't remember what it was now. What I do like, however, is how the horns came in halfway through. And at first the horns came in with just a spark, just a little light to fire. And then eventually coming in hard with the, the horny riffs and in the ways of guitar and of the music, kind of accompanying and adding more momentum to it all. But I like how it began, just like with a spark and then eventually further into a fire. There's a black wind blowing, a typhoon on the rise, pummeling rain, murderous skies. Gonna take my books, my coat, my scarf, wrap it around my throat. And you can come with me through the driving snow. We're gonna ride on up to Medicine Bow. We're gonna look up Medicine Bow in just a moment. Well, I spent too long just stuck on the shore. There's a man in my head, but he isn't me anymore. Like he's lost himself in a sense, perhaps. I'm gonna find me a ship, stow away on a boat. I'm gonna burn all the words and letters and cards I ever wrote. 
and you can sail with me. Where the current flows, we're going to move on up to Medicine Bow. I'm going to change my colors, cancel my things, stop my squawking, and grow some wings, which is interesting in relation to the lyrics from Hello the Moon. And I will not sleep, I will not rest, I'll put my soul to the test. I'm going to tug at my tether, I'm going to tear on my lead, I'm going to test my knowledge in the field of deeds. And you can run with me fast as we can go over the hills to Medicine Row. Whatever he's talking about, he's going to test himself. He's going to push himself. I, I wouldn't say necessarily that, at least what I've thought of this as a concept album, but I would say the lyrics and in some way kind of remind me of Hole of the Moon. You know, this person that was admired so much and wanted to fly like them and, and everything. This seems to be like that snap of, okay, I'm just going to do it. I don't care what, what changes I'm going to make. I don't care what I have to like sacrifice to do it, but I'm going to do it. Uh, let's see what Medicine Bow is. So, Medicine Bow is a town in Carbon County, Wyoming. Its population was 284 in the 2010 census. Could, could this be what, what it is referring to? What is it famous for? The Virginian was the first Western ever written. It brought worldwide recognition to Medicine Bow and made famous the phrase, when you call me that, smile. The TV show The Virginian. Never heard of it. I, you learn something new. That's a small town. 284 people. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have nothing else. I don't even know where to go with that. That, I mean, I don't know. Let's just move on to the next track. It Could that be what it, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's move on into the next track, which is Old England. <laughs> Let's just move on. Old England. Here we go. Here we go. for the traditional and then to almost a scathing review. I like, I like how the song twice has done that, like built up, dropped out almost completely. Old England made me think of, well, obviously because of the lyrics, but musically as well. It, it made me think of this, this old soldier, this, this place, this empire, just with the, obviously the imagery that they're giving, that's beaten, tattered, a little tired, but still marching forward, still trudging on, honorably, gallantly, just trying to, in a sense, remember former glories and retain former glories and reach towards future glories. Like, that's what I, I see. And I think that, I haven't really talked about Mike Scott too much vocally, but I think that he really captures a certain worn emotion in this track, where I see him marching, this, this passion that's still there, but perhaps strength is a little waning. Uh, pat, not passion, but uh, body is a little weakened. But still, like, still having the same fire, perhaps, as an older man that you would have as a younger man. That fire still burns, even though the flesh may not be keeping up. And I think the instrumentation behind that really kept true to that kind of emotional power that at least I'm hearing here. With the drums in a marching pattern marching, moving forward, um, the, the occasional, obviously more later on, but the occasional blitzes of saxophone that would come in kind of sounded like, like trying to, once again, recoup that former glory and, and shine bright, even though perhaps the brass is a little rusted now. And I really like the energy that the band captured there. And those little moments where the music would kind of stop or drop out and then start again. Maybe maybe a trip up, maybe a fall, maybe a moment of failure, but never failing to get back up, never failing to try again, just as Aaliyah said. And I think what he's saying here is something of the sort when he's talking about Old England. What I think is really interesting is some of the lyrics here. Man looks up on a yellow sky and the rain turns to, to rust in his eye. Rumors of his health are lies, Old England is dying. His clothes are a dirty shade of blue and his ancient shoes worn through. He steals from me and he lies to you. Old England is dying. Still he sings an empire's song. Still he keeps his navy strong and he sticks his flag where, where it belongs. Old England is dying. You're asking what makes me sigh now. What it makes, what it is makes me shudder so well. I, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> 
Sorry, I choked. I just freeze in the wind and I'm numb from the pummeling of the snow that falls from high in yellow skies down on where the well-loved flag of England flies. <clears throat> so at first, like, to me, it sounds like he was singing it with reverence. Like, man, I miss the old days, right? Like that kind of feeling. But then maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's a little bit of criticism in here as well. Where homes are warm and mothers sigh, where comedians laugh and babies cry, where criminals are televised politicians fraternize, journalists are dignified and everyone is civilized, and children stare with heroin eyes, old England. Even in his falling, the swans are singing, the last of Sunday's bells is ringing, the wind in the trees is sighing, and old England is dying. You know what? Actually, now looking at the lines there, some of the things he's describing are normal. Comedians laugh, babies crying, it's normal. Journalists are dignified and everyone is civilized. Those are good things. But he's also not afraid to point out perhaps the, thing that, the things that he sees that are wrong or the problems where criminals are televised politicians. Children stare with heroin eyes. So I actually, I like, I like this. It's not necessarily scathing, nor is it over common com commendation, comment. You know what I mean? Like, it's neither bad or, or good, it's gray as kind of everything is for the most part. So I like how it's almost like I'm assuming a his realistic look and through his eyes of old England. I've never been, so I can't say, but what I can do is read lyrics. So with that, let's move on into the next track here, which is going to be Be My Enemy, when I'd rather you just be my friend. Also, before we move on, uh, usually at some point, like halfway in the album, I'll say like, hey, I want to see who's watching at this exact point. I'll give you some sort of test or something. Uh, we're more than halfway through on the album and I have not, uh, but you can still do it just in the comments down below. Um, do you think old England is dying because England's being sold by the pound? What band did I just reference? Just put that in the comments below to let me know if you're still watching. Like what band did I just reference was selling England by the pound? That's an easy one. That's an easy one. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Let's move on into the next track here, uh, which is going to be uh, Be My Enemy. Here we go. You guys remember Indiana Jones? Remember the whole boulder scene and the boulder came down and Indiana Jones is running away and he gets out of the way and everything? This is like if the boulder did pass him by, but came back 10 years later, John Wicking, hunting Indiana Jones down, came back and just like smashed him out of nowhere. This was the boulder seeking revenge on Indiana Jones. This one came out of nowhere with its tumbling, rolling, power and once again that that dense melodic collision the the drums obviously creating that whole rhythm that whole uh tempo there uh so i'm pretty sure on the drums it's going to be chris witten or whiten perhaps uh who's a session drummer he's worked with many a band including julian cope dire straits um uh, uh, a bunch of other places and, and bands rather i don't recognize abc um and the, of course the water boys so I really like that, that bum, bum, ba -da, bum, ba, ba -da, bum, ba, ba -da, bum, that kind of like uproarious tempo that he brings into the music. This madness, this maddening feeling. Matter of fact, especially when when put in connection with that piano, which is very saloony, bluesy, bum, ba -da, ba -da, bum, ba -da, and the way it's playing, it, <laughs> it reminds me of a saloon in an old western town. But we're looking in at the scene when the fight breaks out. The fight has already broken out. There was no, you know, build up to it. There's no resolution to it. It's just drunken brawls all over the place. Bottles being smashed, tables being thrown, and <laughs> just a bunch of, just a big old ruckus. And I really like how Mike brings in that energy with the track. We've heard him go this way before, obviously, but I like how it's returned in this form. And it, it, it blazes. The guitar, that lead, like that that screechy lead comes screaming through like a fiery hawk that's good and what i really liked is that at the very ending in the last like 15 seconds of the track it gets noticeably heavier especially piano wise you just hear it being hammered just being hammered down there 
uh, who might be Mike Scott or it could be Carl. I mean, it could be so many people because a lot of people are playing piano. Uh, so I don't know who, but whoever's doing it brought their hammer uh, to this boulder fight. Well, the dawn is howling and the mainframe shakes. Feel like I've been sleeping in a cellar full of snakes. My wings have been clipped. My shoes have been stuck with glue. Well, if you'll be my enemy, I'll be your enemy too. You do it to me, I'll do it to you. Now I've got my now I've got goons on my landing, thieves on my trail, Nazis on my telephone, killing me to fail. Some of the lyrics might be wrong, like how they've typed it up here. I don't know. They were all sent by someone, obviously you. Well, if you'll be my enemy, I'll be your enemy too. I have a bucket full of Babylon. I've got a handful of lead. I'm going to put them in a gun, man, point it at your head. Because you stole all my friends and you gave me the buffalo blues. Well, if you'll be my enemy, I'll be your enemy too. Now from the slime on your tongue to the nails on your toes, from the scales of your skin to the stains on your clothes, you're going to have to make me do something I don't want to do. If you'll be my enemy, I'll be your enemy too. You know, maybe this could have all been a, a miscommunication. Maybe, maybe they just need to talk it out. Maybe... Maybe there's, you know, maybe everything's actually fine. They just need to have a little bit of a, a parlay. My hands are tied. I'm nailed to the floor. Feels like I'm knocking on the unknown door. There's a gun at my back, a blade at my throat. I keep finding hate mail on the pockets of my coat. While I've been trying to grow, I have been cooling my heels. I've been working the treadmill. I've been working in the fields. And I can't get to sleep. I can't catch my breath. Can't stop talking. I look like death. But I will put right this disgrace. I will rearrange you. That sounds even more harsh than like, I'll get my revenge on you or like, I'm going to gun you down or whatever he's saying. I'm going to rearrange you. Doesn't that sound more threatening? <laughs> Doesn't that sound more frightening than anything else he said before? Well, I don't know what kind of, uh, um, what's that B word? I don't know what kind of, uh, what's the B word when like two people have, two families, two people, two groups have like a animosity towards each other. It's a B word. What's the B word, guys? Nah, it's an F word. Feud. I think feud is what I'm thinking of. Hey, but if you're going to be his enemy, he'll be your enemy too. Let's move on into the next track here, which is Trumpets. I'm going to take a guess. A stab in the dark. I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be some trumpets on the next track, but I'll be really surprised if not. called piano. I like that line. That that note change right there is so beautiful when the piano does that. Okay, trumpets a few things to note. One Obviously, in the track listing, this is a great place to put a track like this, in my opinion, like a cool down, but still filled with romance, still filled with that, that heartthrob kind of feeling, um, especially before the last track, which I think is the longest uh, track and the title track of the album. Um, I like how around that main piano line, which is just jamming, you have, I don't know exactly what it is, but you have little, little like flickering lights of, I don't know what it could be. Maybe it's, it, could it be the Celeste? Or mandolin, maybe? No, it can't be mandolin. I want to say perhaps Celeste. Just those little bright, high-pitched no notes. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> it's the worst way to describe what I heard. But you know what I mean? It's like, okay, it's like the main piano line is the night. But those little, those little fireworks, those little sparks are the stars in the sky. That's the best way I can describe it, I think. And then, of course, once again, the passion and romanticism with, with which Mike sings. It's open, it's honest, it's vulnerable. As he describes, it's naked, and he wants that feeling. He wants that openness to, to absorb and to be connected with this other person, uh, like what we heard before. All right, I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to say something, and I could be totally wrong, and I'm going to look so, so bad if it's wrong, and that's okay. Um... <laughs> Please correct me. <laughs> I know the song is called Trumpets, but the horn sounded like saxophone. Was it actually saxophone being played in here? Or am I just, uh, am I completely mishearing and it actually was trumpets, which makes a lot more sense. 
In a song named Trumpets, I expect the horn to be trumpets. So maybe it was. But was it me? Or it, it sounded kind of sexy. Oh, God. I can see the comments now. I can see. <laughs> Let's just delete that. I'll edit that part out. I'll, I'll edit that part out. Your love feels like trumpet sound. I said, your love feels like trumpet sound. Your life is like a mountain and your heart is like a church with wide open doors. And to be with you is to find myself in the best of dreams. Your love feels like trumpets. That's once again, a very beautiful love letter and a really great way of, way of writing. Your love feels like high summer. Your love feels like high summer. Your life is like an ocean. Yes, your life is like an ocean. I want to dive in naked, lose myself in your depths. I want to be with you, find myself in the best of dreams. So obviously, he just wants to be completely absorbed with this person, right? Okay, we all understand that. We get that. What I really like is, is the ending part, though. Please don't wake me. Please don't shake me, like waking me from this dream. I want to be with you. When being with you is the same as being you. I thought that line kind of stood out and that was kind of interesting. When you, being with you is the same as being you. Being so completely absorbed, so completely connected to this other person that being with them is basically being one person, being them. Like having such a strong connection and love towards each other. I thought that that line kind of stood out really well in, in showing how strong this relationship, this adoration, this love for this other person is. And hopefully that's reciprocated. Let's go ahead and reciprocate ourselves onto the next, the final track, the title track of the album, This Is The Sea. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the journey with me. We got one more song left to go, but I hope that you've uh, enjoyed listening to it alongside with me. Let's go ahead and let it rip. We'll talk about it after. Here we go. I said it when they opened the album, they knew how to make an entrance. With the title track and the final, they knew how to make an exit. Really, really great track to end the album with. I love the lyrics. Because to me, like it's, it's so interesting having the title track at the end of your album. And without even thinking about it like I didn't before. Okay, looking at the title of the album, This Is The Sea. Okay, cool album name, whatever, cool. But how well, how well does it relate to a lot of the songs previously, a lot of the messages that we've gotten previously? It's almost like we gotten this, this explanation, not a twist, but a revealing of what this album means, what this song means in relation to everything else. And of course, the total package of the whole album. I think the way that this is in a way revealed here is just this, it just makes this ending so much more powerful, which we'll talk about it in a little bit when we dive into the lyrics and everything. I, I just think that that's really brilliant the way that that's written and how it relates to everything in connection. Um, musically, I really enjoyed how it's a relatively straightforward song. It moves from point A to point B in about six minutes and so seconds. And it just goes right. It flows like a river as a matter of fact. However, you know, besides, besides the singing and the playing of the guitar, which just strums along, it's all the elements that come in gently, so gently, purposely, and fulfills a certain role to be played. Not necessarily bystanders on the riverside watching the river flow, but participants at certain points, at certain times in this river's life and in the musical life of the song. So the way that, you know, the horns would begin to come in. There's that moment where, was it horns or, I want to say it was horns. And they kind of brew from the bottom, from the background, and slowly rise, slowly rise, slowly rise into eventually this kind of overwhelming cacophonous sound, and then swept away by the current. 
then you would have more instruments do the same things coming in, just adorning the music as it flows. And I really like that kind of musical landscape where you have a relatively straight line of music and things are built around it, not necessarily in it. I think that that was really, really well done, once again, in relation to the message. Let's dive in because I'm going to connect all this together. These things you keep, you'd better throw them away or want to turn your back on your soulless days. Once you were tethered and now you are free. That was the river. This is the sea. Before in many of the songs on this album, we've, we've gone over messages of holding back, being hold, held down, um, tied down and finding freedom, whether that's independence within yourself or even within another person, but finding those wings instead of just dreaming to be a bird, just get up and fly, get up and walk, whatever it may be. And the very beginning says, throw these things away that are weighing you down. The stones you have, the boulder that came back after you like Indiana Jones, put it down, get away from it, move, do something, take action. If you want to achieve your dreams, just do it, right? And I love, I love the lines, which of course make up the title of the album, that was the river. The experiences you had before to get to this point in time, everything that, that built you up to who you are now, everything that every moment in your life, every event that took you to here and now in the present, that was the river. That was, that was this limited path of you getting here. However, now at this precipice, at this edge, at the, the river's mouth, at the delta, this is the sea. This is where those possibilities come from the river and open up into endless possibilities. A, a, a future with so many different outcomes and, and like possibilities that it, it's amazing. It's that magical moment. And I think the way that the band as a whole, the way that the singing is done, just captures that feeling so, so well. It's a really beautiful moment. It really feels like that beautiful moment at the end of the film when, who knows, the the, the cast has gone through some sort of, uh, not trauma, but drama, we'll say. And now it's like the ending is the, is the resolution of the film. Our, our characters are looking off at the sunset and seeing the future, a beautiful future, a good ending that's ahead of them. This is the sea. Now, if you're feeling wary, if you've been alone too long, maybe you've been suffering from a few too many plans that have gone wrong. And you're trying to remember how fun your life used to be running along banging your drum like it's 1973. See, the references aren't just in message, but literal. That was the river. This is the sea. Now you say you've got trouble. You say you've got pain. You say you've, not, you say you've got nothing left to believe in. Nothing to hold on to, nothing to trust, nothing but chains. You've been scouring your conscious, raking through your memories. Scouring through your conscious, raking through your memories. But that was the river. This is the sea. Forget all those things. The emotions that you had to go through, the pain, the suffering, the despair, the loss, all those things, the hopelessness. That was just part of the river. It's brought you here to this moment where you can now take life into your own hands and do something. I think that's brilliant. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overhyping, but I think that's brilliant how it's all brought to this this perfect moment. And it being the ending of the album, he's talking about an ending, but also a new beginning. And like I said, now it being the end of the album, this is the ending of the album, but in a sense, maybe it makes you think. Now I can see you wavering as you try to decide you've got a war in your head and it's tearing you up inside. You're trying to make sense of something you just don't see. Trying to make sense now, and you know you once held the key, but that was the river, this is the sea. And I think there's even a little bit of fourth wall breaking here. Because he even says, like, now I see you wavering, I see you trying to decide. I feel like he's speaking directly to you and me. I know that you're, you're not really thinking about it. I know that you're not really, like, hearing my words, but maybe you are. And if you are, decide. Make your decision. Now I hear there's a train that's coming on down the line. It's yours if you hurry. Like, the opportunity is there. He's speaking to us, guys. You still got enough time. You don't need a ticket. Don't pay no fee. That was the river. This is the sea. And then he exclaims that continuously and repetitively there at the end. I think that that is such a brilliant album in general. But I think that this is such a brilliant song. 
and the way it's all brought together. This is to me the essence of a, a title track and how it really, really relates to the rest of the album, bringing it all together in message, in, in, um, in um, cameo with other songs being referenced in here and bringing it all together. Maybe not a concept album, maybe not even necessarily a thematic album, but an emotional album. This, this, this is the C. That was excellent. That was such a great listen. Uh, favorite tracks, very easily, The Pan Within, top tier, A++, love that track. And then I have to give it to This Is The C, just for the brilliance that I think that it is. Um, really, really great time listening to this one. If you didn't already, you can do all the normal YouTube stuff, press the like button, subscribe, and you know, all that stuff. Um, please, if you wish, join me on uh, Patreon. $2 a month, doesn't, you don't have to do it, period. <laughs> you can do it for one month or whatever you want, but it helps a lot in what I do. Um, and and I, I love doing this. I love exploring albums like this, especially when I can like dig into it. Like I like when there's something to like dive into like this. It, it, to me, it's exciting. It's really, really fun doing this. And I hope that you guys are enjoying it as well. So that's the album. That's the video. Uh, leave your comments down below, of course, your thoughts on it. Am I wrong about the whole trumpet saxophone controversy? <laughs> Um, is, is This Is The Sea as brilliant of a song as I think it is? Uh, is Pan your favorite track too? Or are you finding yourself lost in the labyrinth? I don't know. But what I do know is the video's over now. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with me. Have a great rest of your day, your evening, your morning, wherever and how are, however you are. And that's it, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.